It's 2030, and over the last 20 years, many of the former low-income countries have rapidly achieved a level of prosperity with the aid of fossil fuel technologies. Considerable progress has been made on the Millennium Development Goals, particularly on primary education and the empowerment of women. The low-income countries are increasingly treated as equal partners, with trade barriers and distorting subsidies removed. But despite this, many development gains are beginning to unravel. Addicted to highly emitting technologies for so long, the world is now taking drastic action to make the global economy low carbon, which means a crisis for many industries, affecting many states around the world. The low-income countries can no longer afford their carbon-intensive infrastructure, and many coal-fired plants and similar facilities have been mothballed. Meanwhile, across Africa, the grassroots elephant movement gathers momentum, campaigning for high-income countries to repay their carbon debt to Africa, funding lawsuits against countries and governments. Supply chains everywhere are receding, and multinational companies' products now no longer reach low-income countries. To fill the gaps, entrepreneurs offer locally branded alternatives. The stronger governments have adopted a model of state capitalism and begun to nationalize their most significant companies. To protect its agriculture investments in Africa, China proposes the world's largest rain cloud seeding program, and the UN sets up an office to coordinate geoengineering initiatives to tackle climate change. The UN Security Council uses satellites to ensure the protection of forests, with the power to recommend sanctions for those in breach. Political unrest is common across the globe, and in Africa some countries break up, their colonial borders erased forever. This is a fraught world where the urgent need to cut carbon dominates international relations and raises doubts over many countries' future resilience to problems.